joints we have. Are we all set? Okay, great. Well, good evening and welcome to the Normal Common Council Ad Hoc Affordable Housing um, uh, Committee meeting for today, Wednesday, June twenty second, at six, beginning at six oh six p.m. Um, on the call, we have with us uh, Council Member. Nicole Ayers is with us. Um, myself, Greg Burnett, uh, council person Jen McMurr, council person Nora Najelski Eichner, and council person Diana Revolus. Uh, so we have a quorum uh, to start the meeting. Uh, the third item in the agenda, which was sent out and posted electronically, is approval of the April 27th, 2020 meeting minutes. Um, does anyone have any additions, deletions, or corrections? I have a couple. Um, first, on page one, the last paragraph, it indicates... Uh, Attorney Callahan presented the ordinance in draft form to establish an affordable housing um, committee. It should read affordable housing trust committee. On page two, one, two, the- Excuse one. me, through the chair. Hi, yes. Sharon. Did you, Greg, did you say trust, T-R-U-S-T? -T? Correct. Okay, thank you. The fifth paragraph on page two, the correct spelling of Nora's last name is E-I-C-H-N-E-R. And then finally on page three, the first paragraph, it says, um, Mr. Grant, and I'm not sure who, Mr. Grant is. Um, I, I believe that might have been a question I asked in terms of the time frame to spend the funds. So uh, let's just replace that with um, um, from change Grant to Burnett. Those are the only three that I have. Did anyone else have anything else? Changes, deletions? Mr. Chair, I was trying to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank um, you for catching my name. My first, the first part of my last name. Also, it's N I E instead of E I. In the same. Okay. Place. It's correct at the in the attendee list. So. Right. Oh yes. I mean, yeah. You're right. I missed that. Um, I just had a correction. I I'm looking for my correction, but I cannot see it. But my name was spelled incorrect. It's N I C O L. There's no E. On my name, and I. Thought I saw it on this document and I just cannot find it at this moment. Um, if I find it, I'll, I'll send you a email, Mr. Chair. It's in the attendance. It's, I, I knew I saw it. I couldn't yeah. find it. Okay, so uh, my, name is, my first name is spelled incorrectly. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, it is. So to... Um, uh, Oh, uh, Telesco Services, uh, that's another correction of the name. No problem. Thank you, Greg. Great. Um, well, so with that, um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes as corrected? All right. Uh, Nora uh, Council Person Nora Najelski Eichner. Um, we've gone through the discussion. All those in, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Show by the sign of eye or raising of your hand. Okay, we have one, two, three, four. Uh, all those opposed, any abstentions? I would like to abstain, Chair. Great, thank you. So the minutes are approved with the necessary corrections. Uh, moving on to public participation. 
do we have anyone uh, signed on with the hand raised who wishes to speak at this time? Yes, we have one person with their hand raised at the moment, um, and I can bring them over to speak if you'd like. Great. Yes, thank you very much. Diane Laricella, um, you just have to unmute yourself. Okay, thank, thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Chairman and Committee. Um, for the record, my name is Diane Loricella, and I'm uh, speaking to the item related to the, the, R, the plan, the Affordable Housing Plan, RFP. Um, I, uh, a little bird kind of told me that maybe that person is already, that company may have already been selected, but if not, I just wanted this committee to consider having um, citizens especially citizens that are in need of affordable housing or their representatives to sit on the selection committee. So we are ensure, assured that the company hired thinks outside the box. There are many options now for affordable housing, truly affordable housing in neighborhoods all around Norwalk. Um, and then I uh, related to that, I just wanted to bring to your attention an upcoming planning and zoning commission meeting related to this, related to Public Act 21-29, it was an enabling legislation that I hope all of you look up online with the state legislature. It was passed this session. It contains many items, many things, including uh, mandating training for uh, planning and zoning commissioners, um, but also it included many things related to um, amending our uh, planning and zoning regulations about affordable housing and um, whether we can opt in or opt out. Uh, the only reason I'm bringing this up is my I've, I've understood from the planning and zoning staff working on this, especially Mr. Brian Baker, that there are some new draft amendments. Currently, the commission has asked to opt out. It next is coming before all of you. The council, by a two-thirds vote, must agree or disagree with a planning and zoning commission to opt in or opt out. So I'm sure it's gonna be in your packet soon. I ask that you consider opting in. They voted to opt out. However, at the very least, I'm very happy that if we opt out, there are movements afoot to quickly amend our accessory dwelling unit zoning regulations. But the thing is when you listen to how they're talking about it, we have only had 269 or 70 accessory dwelling units attached since 1984. There's a reason why that's all in a city of this size. I was shocked as were the staff. It's because the standards were so tight, so restrictive. I know the intent is to free up some of the restrictive regulation, but from the comments made by select commissioners of planning and zoning, they are going, going to continue some of this utterly restrictive. And the reason I bring it before you is there are now a lot of new accessory dwelling unit, uh, detached tiny homes, manufactured homes. There's a lot, a whole new world of very attractive accessory dwelling units greater than 600 square feet Maybe not the thousand that the state allows us to, but not 600. So I just ask that you look for this plan, this, um, these amendments that Brian Baker could send you and that this commission, this committee rather, consider having it on your agenda next month or at least sending comments, even individually, because you are our voice, those of us that really need truly affordable housing. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Diane. Um, do we have anyone else that has their hand raised or wishes to speak who is attending from the public? Does not look I see any other hands raised at this moment. Okay, great. Do we have any members of the ad hoc committee that might have received any correspondence which from the public which they wishes, wish to share at this time. 
Okay, seeing none. Uh, at this time, we'll close public participation. Thank you. And we'll move on to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, the draft ordinance was sent around after our uh, last meeting where uh, we discussed the current draft and we made some changes based upon that discussion. Uh, we also have attorney Darren Callahan on the call uh, with us tonight. Um, should there be any additional questions or changes? I, I see one change, um, which is in paragraph three, and it's just a minor, very minor change in that the first sentence, which reads, the mayor shall appoint an affordable housing trust committee consisting of five members. We need to change five to seven. And then the, the, um, the paragraph goes on to outline the seven members of the committee. So that just changing the number five to seven. I just um, read. I'm sorry. Councilman, I just redlined that into the working document. Great, thank you. Um, so um, if did anyone else have any other question? I see uh, uh, council member Nora Najelski Eitner has a hand raised. Nora, any question, comment, et cetera? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, last night, two nights ago at the ordinance committee meeting, we were speaking about the cannabis account, which is a similar structure to this one. And apparently it had been determined that um, referring to it as a trust account was not the best terminology. And Darren, I don't know if you were involved in those conversations or have anything to weigh in on that. But I just, um, again, I think as we're striving to keep our ordinances as consistent as possible across um, the various um, sections of the code, if, they're, if that is in fact correct, um, I believe the cannabis one, we simply dropped uh, trust so that it just became the, you know, the, um, uh, so this would perhaps just become the affordable housing account. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, Darren, if you have thoughts on that, but I just wanted to raise it. I think that makes sense. I mean, I, th I think that, you know, that's, you know, uh, we should definitely um, be consistent between the ordinances and um, it would just be a deletion of one word. So uh, I'll, I'll make that, I'll redline that change into the current working version and circulate well, it. Just curious, was there a rationale behind why dropping the word trust um, from the ordinance? Was any discussion around that? Um, Darren may have further, as I understood it, um, trust has a particular sort of legal set of meanings. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Livingston and Mr. Goldstein had discussed that we're not, what we're doing is not really a trust. Um, and so that it might be confusing to have that terminology. Um, but again, Darren, I, there was not a substantial amount of discussion. So if you've got further comment. Yeah, I, I think it, it is a practical and, and logical approach. It, it generally, when one thinks of a, a, a trust, they think of a, a, an instrument that creates, that creates a statutory, um, a statutory, it's a statutory instrument that creates uh, what's, known as, what's known as a trust and it does have a, a legal connotation to it. Um, so I, I, I understand the, the, the logic behind it. I think it, it makes perfect sense to, uh, to make the change so that there's no confusion. Given the conventional use of the word. Okay. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's whether you call it a trust account or a special account, um, what the statute does, whatever you call it, it creates a non-lapsing account. That's ultimately what the what the statute um, how it operates. Okay. Um, on this particular item related to trust, are there any other questions? Are, is everyone comfortable with um, removing the word trust? Okay, great. 
So we'll we'll make that adjustment. Uh, Council member uh, Nicole Ayers, uh, your hand raised. Thank you, Chair. Um, I had a question in, in my perusing of this document and it might be me not fully grasping um, what the document is saying, but I was looking for a particular language or recommendation to ensure that affordable housing would be throughout the city and not in a particular geographic area or pocket. Um, I don't know if this is the proper place to insert that type of language, but I think it's beneficial from a city development and city growing plan to make sure that affordable housing is throughout the city. Um, I, I guess my thinking around that would be um, this document does not define where affordable housing is. It, it does define in the first paragraph uh, what the term affordable housing means, um, which could be anywhere within the city of Norwalk. Um, I don't know if this is I the right, that. yeah, I don't I know if this that. is the right instrument to define where affordable housing would be, if, that, concern, if that's your point, yeah. My concern um, is that in the distribution of this fund, mm -hmm. can we call it a fund since we're not saying trust, in the distribution of this fund or allocation of money, um, I think we need to give some guidance if at all possible to diversify where these things are going, where these affordable housing opportunities are going and what they look like. I, I think that would be um, a good lens for us to sit in. Now, if you're saying that this is not the document, I think it is the document because it's tied to money. And so if people are going to be recipients of this money, and it, again, it might not be me fully understanding this purpose, but I think I do. I think it would be smart for us to kind of give some friendly language in directing that we we don't want affordable, we want affordable housing throughout all neighborhoods and throughout the city. I, I would actually think that that would be guidance that we would give to the affordable housing committee once the committee is formed, not so much in the ordinance, but the committee that will be reviewing the applications and making recommendations to the council as to how money will be distributed, that would be the place to provide that level of direction as opposed to in the, the ordinance itself. Um, because that's where, for lack of a better term, the rubber really meets the road. When applications come in from across the city and the committee that we're defining in the ordinance begins to do their due diligence and review and research. And then they make the recommendation to the council in terms of how much and where dollars should be uh, distributed. That's, that's where the, the direction that you're pointing out um, should go to that committee uh, in terms of their approach to reviewing applications. So are we That's supposed my to, thought. yeah. And I'm just, mm -hmm. are we supposed to then, because we are not the direct body that will be just dispersing the money. Correct. Are we going to give, we're just giving recommendation or are we going to give oversight to that formalized body? Because how I read the art, the document currently, I'm missing that type of language. It might be in there and I'm not picking it up, but I'm, I'm missing that language that the committee will be receiving recommendations or oversight, whatever language that we're choosing to use to direct how, direct their work, I guess I should say. So um, maybe, maybe I can jump in here, uh, Councilman Burnett. Yes, sure. So m mechanically, um, the way it's designed, uh, just breaking it down kind of in, in broad brush, 
is at a staff level, um, the processes and procedures for applying for use um, are set by uh, guidelines created by the planning and zoning department. Um, it's kind of the, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, uh, the procedural component, uh, the non-substantive component, but the, the actual application itself um, resides um, uh, in the committee that's created by this, uh, what would, we, would be created by this ordinance um, to, you know, review the application and to make a determination of whether, you know, uh, you know, it's a, the application warrants the use of the funds and to what extent and, you know, on what conditions should be imposed. But that ultimately that, that committee's jurisdiction is one of making a recommendation and it would, be, it would, it would then be moved on to um, a subcommittee of the Common Council as it's currently designed, it would be the Finance Committee. Um, so it would originate before the Common Council as a recommendation initially in the Finance Committee of the Common Council and then ultimately to the full council. So um, ultimately the council will have final um, say or veto power um, over the use of the funds. Um, and the way it's designed is the, the council could reject uh, the, the particular use, uh, it, it could modify the use, it could set additional conditions on the use um, from what the initial recommendation was. Can I jump in as well, follow up on that? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so, because I, I am picking up on um, a lot of what Nicole's saying, and I think doing this in tandem with the cannabis account, it's sort of a cyclical, like we, we talked about things with cannabis the other night that have now gotten me thinking about things about the structure here that I hadn't thought of before. Um, so I, I, so I have a couple of thoughts. One is to Nicole's point, we haven't drafted the preamble yet. There's a placeholder for it. And I think that Nicole's original point about um, our intent and our hope that this fund is used to make sure that affordable housing is um, developed throughout Norwalk, the preamble might be an appropriate place for, for a sentiment like that. Because so I think that is more of sort of a vision kind of issue that I think is a statement worth making. So I would certainly support considering that for the preamble. Um, my further thought based on some of the back and forth in the cannabis conversation, um, Darren, is that I do think it might be helpful to have the committee have a specific authorization to review the guidelines and provide feedback to the planning and zoning director on the guidelines themselves. Because I don't want to set up a situation where an applicant, you know, responds to the guidelines, puts in an application, and then gets to the committee. And the committee is unhappy, not necessarily with the application per se, but the fundamental issues was that the guidelines themselves that the applicant was working on were not in fact what the committee thinks are sort of the best purpose. So I think, and there's some implicit implication in there that the committee would review and comment on the guidelines or potentially have that, but I think we might wanna make that explicit. Um, and there was further conversation in the cannabis context um, around the similar cannabis guidelines that perhaps the council should also have the ability to comment on the guidelines again to prohibit or to prevent a situation where an applicant in good faith follows the guidelines and by the time it finally gets to the council the council's um, concern is not really with the applicant but with the guidelines now I think the cannabis situation is different in that I'm not sure that there is going to be a cannabis committee in the same way that there is an affordable housing committee here and I don't want to add too many layers of review either but I do think that someone whether it's the committee or the council should have the ability to review the guidelines before they're implemented um, to sort of maintain that, that citizen and community commentary and not just have the, the initial guidelines be developed by the staff. And Nicole, I don't, mm -hmm. I think that was, I think I'm sharing some of your same concerns or I think that reflects some of the concerns you were having, but correct me if I'm wrong about that. I, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I think my root concern is in a city planning, city development frame of mind. Um, historically, when in Norwalk, when we said affordable, we meant South Norwalk. I'm just gonna put it out there. Affordable was, was designated to a certain location, a demographic location in our city. 
I do not think that is fair. I don't think that it, that that's equality or equitable. I think we should have affordable housing in South Norwalk, in Rowayton, in North Norwalk. I, I, I think affordable housing needs to be everywhere. So my concern with not giving the commission or the committee um, any language around that, that that might not happen. We are then gonna only put it in one location. But I do concur and agree with what you said. I think that's a farther thought. But my initial gut in reading this document as it lives right now is that we need to say we need it to be throughout the, the city. I, am I making sense? No, I, and I completely agree. And I guess, so on that initial point, do you think putting it in the preamble is sufficient or do you think that we should? It, it just needs to be in a document. So it, in, yeah. in the preamble, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. I think it needs to be explicitly stated that Norwalk sees affordable housing everywhere. Um, I tell everybody, I'm not dying in the seat. So I can't speak and think about people who are going to come behind me. So the best I can do while I'm in this seat is give good good wording in, in um, legislation to guide my thoughts five, 10, 15 years in the future. And that's why I, I want to bring it up to this body tonight. No, that makes total sense to me. And I think, and it is a fair point too, if there is other guidance, you know, sort of big conceptual guidance that we want to convey to this committee. And I think it is as, as you know, Greg, as Chairman yeah. Burnett said, right? It is, we don't want to be tying their hands. The whole point of this committee is to have them be able to sort of respond. But I do agree that if they're sort of kind of philosophical direction that we want to convey, that's often what a preamble is for. And that might be really helpful here because I certainly, I mean, I completely agree with you on the larger point, and it is a message that is an important message to send. Um, so I would be, I would be open to amendments like that, and I, and I, and I don't want to lose then my further point. I do think that some guideline review is in keeping with that intent, just to make sure. Not that I've, not in any disrespect to the staff, but the whole point of having a citizen committee, and you want, I feel like you want their comments on the front end and on the back end. Otherwise, you run the risk of slowing down the process ultimately from my perspective. Okay, uh, so Council just, just to circle, circle the wagons uh, a little bit. So the, instead of uh, the guidelines being adopted at the staff by, by, by the, the director of planning and zoning, they would be adopted by the, the common council or the committee. I think the way the ordinance was originally drafted and, and submitted um, there, it, it, it was designed that it would be adopted by the Common Council. And I think there was, then there was some debate of whether staff, it should be more flexible and it should be in the discretion of staff. I think it could be, I think you, know, you could really do it anywhere. It could be, uh, the guidelines could be adopted by the committee. Um, it could, you know, it could be the Common Council. It could be a periodic review. Uh, you know, for example, the purchasing guidelines are supposed to be reviewed, uh, are adopted by the council and required to be reviewed and in, in, um, uh, in, in revised and amended, um, or readopted at least uh, every, every, you know, over a, a specific period or cycle, I think it's every four years or eight years or something like that. So, you know, there's a lot of flexibility here on, on how that can be designed. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really, I bring this up to the committee because I, I would love people's perspective. Um, I think my inclination would be to put it with this committee we're creating because again, we don't want to create a committee and then deprive it of all sort of authority and job, right? There's no sense in having a committee and having them have nothing to do. And I don't know that it needs to come to the council if we're confident that the committee is focused on it. Um, that said, there's, you know, like I said, I also fear the when the applicant, since the application does have to come to the committee or does have to come to the council, if the council members have issues, I, again, I just don't want issues to be raised at the stage where the applicant has already gone through all the work. I want to make sure that the issues come up before that happens. So that would be the only countervailing to have it only go through the committee. I don't know, I'm, I, Diane, I know you've got your hand up and I'm very open to, I'm curious about other people's thoughts. Uh, Council Member uh, Diana Revels. Um, My question is not towards that, but in what I brought up before, which I saw the 
um, I don't remember talking about any green initiative. What I was, what I want to see is there's no language in affordable ownership, whether it be homes, condos, co-ops, in any part of Norwalk. And I think that's really important for that language and um, funding to actually be designated to affordable home ownership and looking at programs that would work and suffice in that, especially to strengthen our community and our, um, our lower hanging fruits for lack of better words. Uh, do you guys see a space and place for this? Because um, affordable housing puts a cap on people. It's just basically being a tenant um, and we need more than tenants. We need ownership for stronger taxpayers here um, that will strengthen our schools, so on and so forth. So um, I'm just gonna bring that back in that verbiage of not only affordable housing, but can we please have affordable home ownership and some type of model program or something um, of thought for that committee as well. Uh that's an excellent point. I guess the question is, should that apply to this ordinance, which is focused on uh, providing this account to focus on constructing, rehabilitating, and repairing affordable housing properties? Um, um, home ownership. Um, those properties, though, could again, I, I, I stress that it could be co-ops, it could be condos, as long as it gives a space and place for ownership, that would be helpful. Um, you can't pass down affordable rents, you know what I mean? And again, it doesn't always have to look like a house, even though I would love that to be it. But we can also look into these developments like being condos or co-ops or something that is in that affordable range. Um, good point. I I, I just I, and 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 uh, Attorney Callahan, um, maybe you know. I would welcome your input. Is that would that be viewed kind of as a separate track from this account? Because um, that entails a whole different set of um, terms and conditions, guidelines as it relates to home ownership and assisting in home ownership, as opposed to this account, which is somewhat earmarked for construction, rehabilitation, and repair. Um, yeah, it, it would it would definitely, at, at a minimum, require quite a, it. They are two different tracks um, to, to a large degree. Um, how you, you know, how you would design, uh, I think, the, you know, the, the ordinance, um, or if it was going to be in this ordinance, uh, it would need to be built out uh, quite a bit differently. Um, than, it, than the way it, it currently is, it's, it's certainly um, achievable. Uh, it, it, it the, one of the considerations is you know um, you're trying to, and this is really uh, on the policy side, but you whenever you have um, uh, tax incentives or uh, accounts. Or, or some other mechanism to spur development for affordable housing. Um, you usually, what you're you're trying to do is to put as, as, as much affordable housing into the, you know, you know, into the, the housing stream as, as possible, and you know, to a certain extent, um, in, in, in invite development in that area. Um, and, and I think that's probably in concept where they started with construction, re rehabilitation, and repair. Certainly, repair could be, um, uh, you know, on, on, a, on an existing home that uh, that is uh, that is owned um, and occupied um, for affordable housing. You know, uh, occupied in, in a manner that meets the affordable housing definition. But um, if the concept is more of of, of acquiring uh, a house, kind of like a mortgage program, 
it, it's this this ordinance is not really designed for that. So I just want to step you again outside of just a house. Like for example, the development right next to um, the the train station. I'm just forgetting the names. Those are co-ops. So it 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 would be like repair of areas that you have um, multiple units that fall under affordability, but is not just limited to being a tenant, but having these people have ownership within it. So I think just our mindset, especially in a time when we're coming to a housing crisis, that we can strengthen this by also giving a lane and space that gives ownership back to it. It doesn't always have to be a two, be two three bedroom house. It can be, um, a, again, a co-op or a condo developed in a situation that looks like the buildings right next door from um, the, the train station, something of, or, um, or even like, or even let's say um, something that looks like Colonial Village, but, and it's renovation, but now we're making it co-ops, not just tenants or rental. That's what I'm saying. Like, if we expand our mind a little bit to put a sector in this that allows that a little bit more, we had that in Norwalk, we're losing that. And um, I'm just hoping that there is a lane somewhere in here that can um, help in providing and facilitating that not only in South North, but then also those type of things could then be seen again in on Wall Street or um, Broway in or, um, Connecticut Avenue, so on and so forth. So I, I now uh, thank you for um, for further fleshing that out. It, and now I, I, I get exactly what uh, the point is. So I do think it does touch, it, it currently does touch on that. So um, whether the developer is constructing, um, you know, the affordable housing for rental or for ownership, um, that that's just part of the application process. So the committee may say, uh, we're gonna pass on the developer who is you know, proposing constructing affordable housing for renting. And when, when we have another developer that's you know, ready and willing to develop affordable housing for ownership, this, this, ordinance, this ordinance can do that. Um, awesome. It, it, what, what, I'm sorry. No, I said awesome, awesome. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> it, 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 def it, def it definitely hits that. Um, where, where I think, and, and this is where I got a little confused, is um, where, where it does diverge a little bit, is it, it you know, it, it, I think it's possible to do, you could create um, a, a, like a lending program or a funding program for just purely for assistance of first, like first time home buyers or, you know, um, to, to acquire um, a house from, you know, you know in, in the open market so that they, they, they can acquire housing that they otherwise would be priced out of. It doesn't do that. It, it could have been done, it, absolutely. Is this the right instrument for it? I don't know, I, you know, it's hard to, I'm not sure I can answer that, you know, on the spot, okay. um, but uh, it, it's certainly, it's achievable, whether it's in this ordinance or, or in another format, it's achievable. Okay, thank you so much. If we could look into it just a little bit, I would really appreciate it. And thank you for sure. your response. Sure, okay. thank you. Uh, Council member Jen McMurr. Nora, did you want to go first since you had your hand up first? Oh, did you? I'm sorry. I didn't. That's okay. I, just, I was going to comment on what you said before and circle back around. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful or not. Yeah, go for it. I've talked a lot. <laughs> okay, no problem. I mean, I just didn't want to cut you off. Um, I was no, going to say, um, I agree with what Diana is saying, um, or council member Revolus, um, is saying about, um, ownership, because I know that she talks about that a lot. And that's something that I'm, um, in favor of as well. Um, we want people to put roots down here. And the only way for us to really do that is to offer up affordable ownership 
in whatever way we possibly can. So even if it's not in this ordinance, which I understand it may not be the best place because we're talking about this account specifically, but I do think that we need to continue that conversation for sure. Um, and then to circle back on what Councilmember Nijalski Eichner had said about um, the committee and the council, I think that Darren, you had mentioned um, a periodic review could be possible as well. And I think that's um, probably something that we should add in, um, whether it's by the council or the committee, but um, you know, you just never know what the future holds like um, council member errors said. And I think that a periodic review of anything like this is always really important to do. Sure. So what I could build into the ordinance for, you know, to develop the conversation um, is that it, to make an obligation upon the department, the staff, to propose updated um, guidelines on a per per periodic basis. Um, and then ultimately what those guidelines look like and are adopted would be a discussion topic for the committee to coalesce on. It'd probably be the 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 tidiest way to do it. I like tidy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Councilperson Nora Najelski Eichner. Um. Yeah, thank you, Jen. And I, I think tying a couple of these things together. So Darren, I really appreciate the clarification about the purposes of this, because that was actually one of the things I was going to say. I don't see anything in here that would prohibit the use of these funds to build or rehab um, owner owned, affordable owned properties, right? I think that it's just that this we are intense. And I think uh, Chair Burnett was very clear about this from the beginning that our real hope was to make sure these funds were dedicated for the hard costs of construction, because that is such the barrier um, in so many ways to these programs or to these um, to this affordable construction happening. So I would be in favor again, returning to the preamble. I would be in favor of a preamble that, to Councilwoman Ayers and Council Member Leverlus's points, talked about you know our commitment to building affordable housing throughout the city to building affordable housing that included both rental properties and home ownership properties. Um, and I think um, council member Revolus had also mentioned briefly our commitment to building green. Um, and I feel like, again, those that the preamble would be an appropriate place to set out, you know, three sort of philosophical visionary objectives that would guide the work of the planning and zoning department in the guidelines and the committee in, in the guidelines, but would leave an enormous amount of flexibility within that. To, for them to actually create, what does that look like in this given year? What are we seeking in this application? Those would be certainly more aspirational. And that's often what I feel like a preamble is for. Um, so that would be a proposal that I would put forward um, to kind of build on those ideas. And I do think it's important to Council Member Revolus's point to make it clear to planning and zoning and the committee that this money can be used for ownership as long as it's being used to build the buildings that then would become you know, buildings for ownership. And I can imagine and I know this is a complicated topic, but I can imagine then, for instance, the guidelines for that year then having requirements in them as to how the homeowner might then have an obligation to return some funds to the account when they sell the property next. Or I mean, there's different ways. I know this has been handled in multiple places, so that you know there's not a sense that one person is kind of getting a windfall from the city because they do get to own the property then. And so that sort of changes the dynamics. But that feels to me like the kind of thing that could be handled in the guidelines. This is more of a sort of just pointing out that it is allowed and that we would expect planning and zoning to figure out the mechanics of how this could be done fairly. So I don't know, if that's my take on it. I would be very supportive of an approach like that. Um, I do think it would reflect the values this committee has really put forward. I like that yeah, idea. I, I um, just, to, just to kind of um, emphasize other, those points. Um, so for example, uh, well, there's, 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 there's only a handful of towns that have actually taken this step. So we're definitely on, on the leading side of this. Um, but other towns that have, um, they've chose to do it in different ways. But for example, um, as far as you know, repurposing the money, 
um, or, or making the most of these funds. Um, for example, Fairfield does it as a loan program uh, so that the account gets replenished. Now that may not be the, the, the best format. And then they do it as, as part of the guidelines. Um, uh, so that may not be the best format for, for Norwalk. Um, maybe the format is, is um, you know, something, some sort of, uh, you know, real estate instrument that requires some, you know, some, some repayment upon sale on some sliding scale. Uh, but I, the point, the larger point is that the guidelines really can be created to achieve any of these, these results. And, and, I, you know, I, I think some of the wisdom of, of having and not setting everything forth in the ordinance, but having some written guidelines as, as it allows for, you know, kind of flexibility over time to learn from, you know, how, how you know, what kind of applications are getting submitted, you know, what the level of interest is, how to generate, you know, you know, more affordable housing from, from you know, in light of the amount of funds that are, are being invested in the account you know, and so forth and so on. But there's a, a, a lot of ways it can be done. Uh, Council member uh, Nicole Ayers. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was gonna say something really great, I promise you. But after Nora said what she said, it made me rethink for a minute, but I really was gonna wow you. I, I guarantee it was gonna be a whopper. Um, I think that I'm okay with the ordinance as being written, written with the minor adjustments that we've spoken about tonight. I'm okay with the preemblem and having it divided in kind of three areas of focus. My concern is we want this money to stretch as long as we can possibly get this stretch. What is the thought? And we might not need to discuss that tonight. What is the thought to keep more money coming in to this fund? Because one thing that we have not touched on, and I think that everything that was brought up in this conversation it is really important and we, we, we write where we need to be. But again, looking at our city and knowing that this is an intergenerational city, we as a city have not done our best when it comes to elder care and, and, and elders and housing. We have not done our best, I'll leave that there. And I think that in the vein of affordable housing that is aligned with elder housing um, because some people at a certain age, they no longer want to stay in their home but they don't have options to go to a smaller home or a condo or something of that nature. And so again, um, Chair, if we can kind of put that as an agenda item to talk about later, um, one, the replenishing of this fund, and two, how can we prioritize elder housing under the scope of affordable housing? Um, I think we kind of, play a part in the, in the housing market. If people are not moving out of their housing and we're not getting no extra land, where can we put these housing? I mean, we get tons of calls, complaints, emails about the buildings are too big and the buildings are too long and it's too many units. And we do our very best to problem solve um, those things. But I think we need to be a lot more creative. We need to look into tiny homes. I've said this to my colleagues before we need to look into tiny homes. That is a way of home ownership. And that is a way of maybe getting some people out of big larger homes when they had a larger family into a more condensed um, place and location. And tiny homes might be more um, favorable to certain neighborhoods in our city um, that are less industrial and don't want the bigger kind of boxier locations. So I wanted to put that down. And lastly, I want to say um, the work that we're doing here is groundbreaking work. I know Darian um, noted that other towns are doing it, but I, I guarantee you they're not doing it the way Norwalk is doing it because this committee has been very intentional and the members of this committee really are passionate about 
affordable housing and all of the nuances and the different looks of affordable housing. I do not want to tie the hands of the committee or the commission that's going to be doing this work. But I have to say, I would like to work on the guidelines a little bit more to be very um, intentional of, of what our expectations of the work is to be done. And I do think we should be able as a council to review those guidelines in a three-year period, every three years or so, let's look at these guidelines to make sure that they are lining up with the scope and the need of the city. Can I just jump on something um, Ms. Eyre said, um, in particularly with elders, and this is part of, uh, first of all, I'm so for tiny homes too, or good trailers. Secondly, why in particularly too about the housing crisis, one of the things that families are losing when elderly lose their home is equity in their family generationally, especially in the black community. That's why I'm saying with affordable ownership where it looks like a condo or a co-op, it removes the um, need to, you have um, maintenance that, takes care of the land, that will mow your lawn, that will, um, you know, remove your garbage. And these are the things that cause elderly to want to downsize because they have too much responsibilities in their homes, whether even if their fridge goes out, they have someone to call to help. This is also part of why I want to converse about this um, in this scope, because it still gives equity to the family, but then brings down um, you know, the responsibilities to an elder community, which is really what's happening a lot now. And then there's that we have children that are in college or millennials that are not being able to find their next step in place because of the uh, because of the um, the amounts that it's costing. So just to double back, even in particularly with elders, this is why something like affordable ownership, but on a smaller scale would be so helpful because it gives the responsibility of maintenance for the home to somebody else, but still keeps ownership with them. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, Council member, uh, Norman Dijelski. Thank you, uh, Chair Burnett. Um, and I don't want to speak in advance of anything, um, but I had a conversation at the MLK corridor events today, which I think resonated with a number of these themes that um, Ms. Laura Cella's comment also referenced. So my understanding is that there is going to be an accessory dwelling unit um, ordinance brought to the ordinance committee sometime in the next few months that I think, I hope will very much be part of all these conversations. Um, so I don't have more information than that, but I do think that that's something that we should be very much cognizant of and I think is in the works with staff for sort of a proposal to be made. Um, and perhaps, you know, should be part of the conversation of this as well. And I, that's all, that's all my information about it, but I just, I do think that it is on the radar. And I think Ms. Laura Cella's comments, um, my understanding is that it is not that the city is trying to do less than the state allows, but rather we're actually trying to do more, more. but that may complicate our opting in versus opting out, but it's not a, a, a rejection of the proposal. It's actually trying to, to be more progressive, I believe, but I am not an expert on this having not yet seen it, so. Okay, to um, kind of bring this full circle, um, I guess the one piece that we need to see at this point is what the preamble will look like and the wording of the preamble. Um, before, we, before we move this forward to the um, ordinance committee to begin so they can begin to do their level of work. So um, is that something, Attorney Callahan, that you can provide a draft to us at some point? Sure. So um, <clears throat> I absolutely can provide a, a draft. Um, if um, So the points that I have so far uh, is that the preamble should touch upon uh, affordable housing geographically and meaning throughout the entirety of the city. Um, so to be very clear uh, on that, um, 
uh, about the effort to uh, build green and um, that the intentionality of, of, of this is um, is that affordable housing, the development of affordable housing, whether it's construction of new or rehabilitating existing uh, goes to ownership uh, in, in addition to adding rental capacity. Um, so adding owner you know, uh, housing for, for ownership as well as, as housing for rental. Those are the, these, those are the, the concepts that I understand want to be engrafted into the preamble. Uh, if there are additional ones, um, if, if members of the ad hoc committee would uh, send me email, you know, an, an email, um, and I will interlace those concepts in as well. Thank you. Yeah, I think you captured the um, essence of all the comments that were made tonight. Great. So, uh, so we will, um, so I will, once um, uh, Attorney Callahan makes those adjustments, I will recirculate the draft ordinance. Um, uh, my mission is to get it right and not just to get it out. So if we, I'll recirculate it, we take time to review it and make sure everyone's comfortable with the wording um and if need be we'll we'll bring it back to the next committee meeting to um get full agreement on uh and and a level of comfort on the wording before we bring it to ordinance committee so uh, councilman burnett i think it, it probably would be very beneficial to, to have this back before the ad hoc committee we won't least one more time because yes. there there is you know a, a, a number of things that um, I've been asked to, to, you know, add or, or develop in this document, uh, at least tentatively, uh, plan to do that. We, we will definitely bring it back to, um, um, bring it back to the ad hoc committee before it goes anywhere. Yes. Right. Uh, we, we won't rely just on circulating it via email. And we'll bring it back together as a group to review it before we move, before it moves anywhere. Perfect. Good. Sure, Burnett, I would be willing to volunteer to commit to <laughs> helping uh, Attorney Callahan if it's helpful um, in the intermediate to try to um, do a one round of, of revisions, if that would be helpful. Um, since I know I did propose a number of the <laughs> language issues. <laughs> it, it, it would be welcome. Okay, I will be happy to do that. <laughs> but it would be welcome for anyone. Um, right. But it, certainly it'd be, it would be welcomed, um, uh, particularly with respect to the preamble. And I really do want to capture what it is that um, you all want in there. Uh, so uh, absolutely, uh, please, if you, if you have the ability and the time, um, I will make my time available to you. Awesome, I'll shoot you an email. Great, thank you. Great. And as uh, Attorney Callahan mentioned, if anyone else has any thoughts, please uh, reach out and can be part of that process also. Yes. Uh, with that, um, uh, moving on to item six, which is an update on affordable housing plan RFP. Um, and um, we have with us uh, Michelle, um, uh, if you can introduce yourself and uh, your role and your involvement with the um, uh, planning and zoning uh, department, that would be great. Sure, thanks. I'm Michelle Anjeski, um new hire for uh, the senior planner position. Um, I was an in inside hire. I was previously the land use planner, now I'm the senior planner. So I've been with the city for roughly about four years. So I'm a little familiar, but getting a little bit more knowledge is sitting in listening to you guys today is great. Um, and I'm excited to kind of be the liaison for you guys and help you whatever you guys need. Great. Well, welcome. And we look forward to working with you. Um, with that, um, as it relates to the affordable housing plan RFP, uh, the RFP did go out um, 
we did receive um, a minimal number of responses of which um, a, one organization was interviewed and um, I believe we're still in the process of deciding whether we're going to go forward with that um, organization to assist in the uh, uh, creation of the affordable housing plan. Is, is that correct? I know Steve Kleppen, the PNZ director, um, uh, uh, was not available to join us tonight, but uh, Michelle, do you have any further update beyond that? No, yeah, that, that sums up, um, to my knowledge, the status of um, the, the plan at this point. Great. Um, and I know one of the things that was definitely emphasized was the um, focus on capturing input from the community um, as it relates to formulating the affordable housing plan uh, beyond just having one or two um, community meetings, but really, um, really making a major effort in terms of capturing the input of several different committee communities across Norwalk in terms of building the affordable housing plan, and more importantly, building a plan that is very actionable. Um, so we are taking the steps to make a plan that um, will bring about results and not just making a plan to say we have a plan, but an actionable plan that can have an impact across normal. Um, so more work is being done in that space. Uh, Council member Nora Nijelski Eichner. I just want to clarify, um, is the, so there was, there were not a lot of bids. You're interviewing one um, of the bidders. Is the question whether we're going to go forward with that bidder or put it out for bid again? I just, I wasn't, I, I just wasn't quite clear. I, I, yes, sure. I believe, okay. I believe the, the intent is to move forward with the, the organization that was interviewed um, to, to put it out, um, to put it out, uh, to bid again. Um, um, th there's no guarantee that we would attract more applicants. Okay. Um, several communities across Connecticut are going through this exercise um, currently. So for us, um, we appear to be comfortable with this organization um, that they can uh, assist us in delivering an actionable affordable housing plan within the scope of um, the dollars that we have allocated to build the plan. Uh, which, as Terrific. you see on the agenda, is one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Terrific. That's great. So I just I want to make sure it wasn't that it was a dissatisfaction. It's more of a just we're still no. in the middle of the process. No. Terrific. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, any questions as it relates to um, this particular item? Okay. Um, Moving on, um, we are still working with the Norwalk Housing Authority to uh, find a date so for the committee to visit uh, Colonial Village and the renovations that are taking place. Kind of want to see a present state uh, unit and kind of a, um, a, a renovated unit to get a kind of a comparison of the work that's being done. So working closely with uh, Adam Bovelsky to um, have a date when um, we can make the visit and, um, and be able to have a valuable visit where we can see the renovations that have been done and be able to see um, what changes have been made. So that is still being worked. I've asked um, uh, Adam to provide a couple of dates, which we will share with the committee to so you can plan your availability. And um, I think it will be great for us to get out into the community and actually see some of the work that's being done. So um, that, 
that will be coming up. We're targeting, possibly trying to get this done, uh, have the visit in the August timeframe. Can it be later August? Later August? Uh, I'm oh, too the... early August, so can oh. it be later August? <laughs> 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 Carrying a baby around. <laughs> Sounds like a special request that we can definitely honor. So I'll I'll, I'll take that back to Adam that we'll look towards uh, the latter part of August. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, if there's no other items or uh, uh, or comments to be made, um, we can move forward and adjourn at this point. I'll give that motion if needed. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Council Member Diana Revolu moves the motion to adjourn. All those in favor, show the sign of aye by raising your hand and it's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, great meeting, great discussion. And um, I'll see everyone shortly. Nice All right, take care. Bye.